What's going on, everyone? We are here. We are in the Trader Society's headquarters. We are in the podcast studio, coming at you with the first episode of the Trader Society's podcast. With that being said, let's go ahead and uh, let's introduce ourselves. I want you guys to, to meet the man, the myth, the legend. What's up, everybody? It is Derek Bandy. Uh, as you guys know, or probably know, I've been a, a trader for quite a while now. It's been like seven years um i gave you guys a free course on youtube that you should see <laughs> it's it's pretty good it's all right but it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> uh but yeah no i've been a trader for a little while now uh i'm a pretty strict trader i'm a patterns trader uh and that's me as far as trading uh my whole goals with the trader society podcast and all this is just honestly bringing just tons of knowledge to you guys we've been doing it so long that we've been through the ups and downs of the industry and so we're just going to try to provide you know our truths to what's happened in our trading careers value and education and just what it bleeds from us exactly and so. then we got granny over here mr yeah. granny i'm the rookie of the group <laughs> <laughs> the rookie no uh i'm grant uh i've been trading now for about what two years well uh, you've been full-time trading but full-time like, yeah Yep, and uh, so I'm excited to be part of the group. Me and Anthony go way back. I've known Derek for a long time, so I'm excited to, you know, continue to learn and grow and bring my knowledge to everyone else and, you know, let Mike shut off. Uh, <laughs> let, uh, you know, let you guys guide me through this journey. Yeah. So really excited. It's awesome. It's awesome. But he knows more about economics than actual charts, too, too though. Like I that's wouldn't your say that he's just good at economics. He he's knows very a lot good. About charts, <laughs> well, that too. I meant like I meant like he brings the economic side to us. Yes, like because yes. I don't research that shit. No, and I'm pretty sure I can speak for you. <laughs> I know you I don't know as much bit. either. Like yeah, I he studies that shit. So I know. he's 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 the man. Oh, um, yep, yep. Well, my name is Anthony. You know me as Anthony's World. Um, I am just excited to have a team. Like I've been trying to you know do this for a while, and it's just like it's not fun by myself um and i want to provide value and education and a ton of knowledge because i feel like it always happens the knowledge just happens but it never happens when you want it to happen like and you never like can like just spit off knowledge you can but not really like it's more in that so it's like i've noticed myself like being in here like walking to different offices walking to your office walking to your office I just spent two hours looking at the charts but i walk into your office and i see something different i walk into his office and i see something different i'm like Mm. It's like it's kind of cool, like being able to like bounce off of each other, bounce off with other traders and stuff like that. And so that's a really, really cool atmosphere that I feel like is going to help me grow as a trader and help which if we grow, then everyone else gets to grow with us because we get to share our knowledge and experience oh, with them. Definitely. So that, well, I mean, that's the, the good part about like this, like there's so many different aspects of yes. this. I mean, we got Grant, who's fairly new, so maybe he hasn't been through some of the stuff that we've been through. But at the same time, I mean, he's lucky because he gets to learn all these things before we even had the opportunity yep. when we first started to learn the types of things he's learning now. And he's and he's also that bridge, I've noticed, like between the traders and us, because a lot of times we're just like... Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> we're like, we're like that. That he's, but he's that bridge because, like, he's in the trenches, but he's like in the like, like we're all in the trenches. But like, I feel like you're in the trenches, as in like, uh, you're a successful, you know, profitable trader now, and like getting more and more successful at it. So you're not like on the losing end, but you're not also at the the point where you're like satisfied yet right, with trading. Right. So you're like kind of like that bridge. Which I mean, I'm not saying that I'm satisfied or that you're satisfied. It's just more of like a. Just you're not afraid to take a trade either. Like that's right. <laughs> like well, that's a big thing. The same thing. Like with time comes like different. You, you see different Knowledge. things in the market where it's like it just takes experience to learn those things. It and does. So you see him like doing some stuff where it's like you can you know say oh well what about this and you know he's learning from that as well right. which is pretty well, awesome. Well the market's see. also just changed too and oh, I had good. to I've had to completely reevaluate like I. Life. It was about, <laughs> yeah, well, completely reevaluate, like, my approach mm -hmm. because the last three weeks have been, you know. Chaotic. Chaotic. And crazy. Crazy. Just these huge uh, higher time frame continuations where it's like we're getting really no pullbacks. And it's absolutely ridiculous to see 800, 900 pip moves 
yeah, with and like not, not stopping. A sing- yeah, on like multiple pairs. Mm-hmm. Though. It's not just one pair. Like, I'm pretty sure it's about every pair. <laughs> it's either pairs are dead or they're just moving like crazy. Yep, it's it's been interesting to see. So let's uh, let's jump in. Let's like, what are y'all's like? I know it's to provide value and education and information, but what are y'all's like? really y'all's goals with trader society like um what and what are you like most excited about what part of what part of trader society are you most excited about like because i noticed like you lately you've been loving the lives like you love hopping on the lives lives i like chatting in the group yeah updating people Mm -hmm. and for me like this is what i like right here like this is what i'm passionate about so it's like where where are y'all feeling Uh, For me, honestly, like I'm learning through all this as well. Like right now with the market changes and having to adapt to these market changes, like I've been out of the market. I've only taken like one trade and it wasn't even a really great setup in the past three or four weeks. And it's just because like I'm not used to these markets. So adapting to those markets is uh, it's something that I'm learning as well. Um, But I mean, honestly, with this, I just like you said, like providing value, but not only that, like just creating a community where everyone likes to be in. And like, we have three very knowledgeable people in this group that are about the world. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with trading is like, if, if people would like listen to the people that are actually doing it, then they would be a thousand times better off because Light years ahead. Light years ahead. Because nowadays, I feel like everyone's just doing everything. They're learning from every different style. And I think that's like shooting yourself in the foot. It's like, dude, everyone acts like they know everything. Like, people will give their analysis, and it just, it doesn't really help the overall picture Mm -mm. unless it's like a community that kind of all sees the same thing. I agree. I agree. I, I see a lot of, I have a lot of friends of mine that like, you know, jump into Forex and they're like, this, 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 this. And it's like, I look at the charts one week and they have uh, 17 Bollinger Bands. And then I look at the chart next week and they're using Hike and Ashi. And then the next week they're using Renko patterns. Next right. week they're trading Gartley patterns. And it's just like, it's like, what at what point, like, do you give yourself enough time to implement a strategy or a way of trading, a style of trading in the markets to, like, really see if it's profitable or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like I've pretty much traded the same for the last Yes, and you pick up things like so like four years. We, things, yeah, we pick up things. So are you picking up those things from other traders or are you just noticing those things? I'm in just the noticing market? them exactly. in the market. That's the crazy thing. That's how I've always been. Like just noticing different yeah. things in the market and then like, okay, this works out time after time after time and then yeah. ad- like adapting that to my strategy. I will say there's times where I do scroll on Instagram and like someone posts a chart and stuff. And it's like something and it's like I can I, I'll look at it. And I'll be like, that's an interesting way to look at it. And then I'll go look at it. and I'll be like, damn, I would have never saw that like sure. that. But I see why it worked. And then like like I think a lot of my time, like a lot of my problems, is sometimes I look at the bigger picture way too much or I have like I, I sometimes go through phases where I only train on my phone because it's like it limits to what I can actually see. Right. It is. It's it's over. It simplifies everything. It hardcore. Like I can it. only trade US thirty from my phone. If I start looking on the on my computer and marking up chart, I get so overwhelmed. And it's, just, <laughs> it's like and the, it's like what's going on in the world. Like there's so much different information on both sides. Where it's like, what's what one do I believe? What's right? <laughs> what's know? right? What's mm-hmm. right? And that's it's hard, man. I mean, like, and by any means, is trading easy. Like there's like it's fucking hard. I don't. Care. I don't know why anyone wants to do this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like 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 just save yourself now. <laughs> just yeah. save yourself. No, I mean I know why people want to do yeah. it because it offers freedom. I mean, look at our life. Mm. It offers freedom, the ability to be able to do, I mean, what we want whenever we want. It's like, you know, it's like even like you know like you like you trained this week. You did really good this week, and it's like where else could you do that? Right. No, like exactly from from just your from your phone yeah you know? like, like from your phone or from your computer and like the opportunities are absolutely endless in forex and that's honestly that's what got me like there is no there is no end there's no limit there's no there's, limit. there's not like there's so many avenues there is yes there's so many there, different opportunities to do it and it's just just learning how to like trade like like if you can be a really uh strict person on yourself and like have discipline Dude, I know quite a few people that they take, like, one trade a day. Like, they take 20 pips a day. Dude, I know people take one trade a month. 
that, and yeah. kill it. Yeah. Like to think about it. if you have a million dollar account and you're looking for one trade for eight percent. Yeah. You just made eighty thousand dollars in a month. Call it a day. Call it a month. Oh easy. yeah, yeah. Call it a month. Sounds so easy. <laughs> it yeah. it does sound easy, but, but it's people like people got it figured out, dude. Dude, mm. well they've been doing it for a long time too, and it's like that's like that's was a challenge for me. It's like learning just because I know what the market's gonna do doesn't mean I should be in a trade. Right. That's, that's a hard one. That's a very hard one. Like I've been calling UJ GJ long for a long time. Like the last three weeks, I'm like it's going long. Mm-hmm. And it's like I just didn't find an entry, but I knew it's gonna go long. Still gonna go long for yeah. a long time. And it's like, why didn't we just buy? Why yeah. didn't we just buy and put the stop loss of profit and say, bye, bye, <laughs> and then bye every and time, say bye dude, every time? I think like, dude, that would have been like a freaking two hundred thousand dollar trade, like easy, easy yeah. money. It didn't stop, and mm-hmm. I knew it was gonna do it. That's like the hardest, one of the hardest things about trading is like you know something's gonna happen, but then you're like second guess yourself like is that really what's it's, gonna it's the happen? emotion behind it it's the emotion behind it and it's like the perfectionist side i think of like trading like like you're always taught you need to have a perfect entry or something like that and it's like i think that's the the forex mentality and mindset is something that i'm most excited about to try and change in people's eyes with this podcast is because there is such a stigma like that if you're not a perfect trader, you're not successful at trading. Yeah. And that is bullshit. Or if you're like, if you're not flipping accounts, then you're not real, a real trader. It's like, and that's just like to me, like people who flip accounts aren't real traders to me. No, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I know a lot of people that trade. Certain what type ways. of accounts are we talking? Like, well, I know people that like what they do is they will put $10,000 in 10 accounts. Yeah. And that's their limit. Instead of ha- they would rather have a ten thousand dollar account and risk it every single time. Risk the whole ten thousand. Risk the whole ten thousand dollar account. How many account. people can do that though? Well, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I know people that are like that's how they trade. That's how their mentality works in trading. They would rather have that than a one one hundred thousand dollar account. For sure. And they would be like, because they know like my R to R is five to one. I'm not gonna lose ten trades in a row. For sure. I might lose two, and then I'll win one, and then now I'm up fifty that's grand. That's a scary way to. Tra- I don't like that. I don't like it either, but yeah, there's a lot of people that where do it's it. Okay, like if you have a ton of money, do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. But right. most people don't who who are at least in this point trying to learn how to trade. Trying to learn how to trade, like. But just, there's so many possibilities nowadays. If you can just master the skill set, like, like we didn't have prop firms. No. Like even when you first started trading, did you know about? I didn't know really no. about prop firms until fir- first time I ever like heard a year of ago. it was uh, from Carlos. Yeah, he came on the po- talking about. It. I'm like, that's the whole. It's world. I mean, like, it does open a whole world up. Yeah. Could you imagine like being able to pass a challenge? Like, think about this: passing a challenge, ma- getting to two hundred thousand dollar account, and just making five percent, five to ten percent a month. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to make five right. to ten percent a month at all. That's what I preach. Like, and then, and then all of a sudden, now you're making ten to twenty grand a month trading. That's, exactly. That's a great like way to trade great living too it is it is and so i personally like i like that better like i like that like where you know you can place the two standards and just be like yeah you know what i don't have to stress it when i go to sleep (laughs) i can just stay in it well i'm talking about on a two hundred thousand dollar account you could place two standards and not stress it well look look at look at chris well no but you're talking about oh you're talking about still just risking five percent yeah 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 like being able to like have that low risk that that, that's how i trade yeah that's the best way to well it's not the best way to trade there's people that trade different ways it's not my place to say that I think that is the best way to trade because trading is fucking stressful. It's super stressful. If, <laughs> if you're over leveraged, if you're over is even if you're not even... over leveraged, it's not, bro. If you're not over leveraged, it's really not that big of a deal. To I don't risk, know. Like honestly, like I I trade six figure account. If you're risking two percent of that account, it's like all right. If you I make win, four or I'm five making, grand a day, yeah, exactly. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, like especially if you're making money elsewhere. True, but I don't know, man. I'm just so I don't know if it's just me. It's just I'm like addicted to like not losing. No, you're just addicted to testing limits. Bro. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm hardcore addicted to testing limits. So it's like I hate fucking losing trades. But it is what it is, you know. Um, but that's the fun part about <laughs> trading. Your ass will hedge and yeah, I dude. won that way, and then it comes back. <laughs> oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> We made money, baby. No, hedging, honestly, though, is, like, one of those crazy things where if you can work your – I know people who, like, 
I don't hide, I do. but I know people who just wiggle their way out of dude, these little situations. And I'm I love like, it. Oh, this drives me insane, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I love it, man. Like, I think Connie it's awesome. this morning, he's like, should I hedge? <laughs> <laughs> Did you I'm hedge? All, I'm going to close it, bro. <laughs> Did you hedge? You should have hedged. No, should have hedged. He closed it. Was it a win or a loss? The thing was, like, you have to know how to hedge and how to know how to manage, like, yes. when to get out of that hedge. There's where a it's lot like, of quick math going on. <laughs> it's if like, you, okay, if yeah, I can get yeah. out at that certain point, like, that's where, if I, like, I have hedged before, and, like, my mindset was not right when I was doing it. I was negative account, or negative in an account, put a place, or hedged, and, like, then trying to find the bottom of that hedge move so you can get out <laughs> of the other hedge move. It's like, oh, God, it's hard. Yeah. I don't know. I love it. That's my favorite way of trading. I know a I lot of people. a lot do. of money hedging. <laughs> I don't hedge anymore. <laughs> that is true. You don't hedge anymore. I don't hedge anymore. Yep. I, you I you have the, to I take be, the loss and move on. You have to be, I will say, in order to be a really good hedger, you have to be insanely knowledgeable on more than just the markets. Mm -hmm. You have to know, like, you have to be able to add hundreds of thousands of dollars, like, in your head quickly. Right. And be able to know like a margin level percentage, um, contract sizes of, of what, pairs. What exact position to close? What if you have four or five different positions? That yeah, you I've, you been, I've been I've been in ones. positions. Yeah, yeah, you have to know. I've been this in like is just crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've been in I've been I there was one time I was in hedged in uh, like GU and I think I had three four hundred lots buys and three four hundred lot sells. And um, I was negative like two three million dollars on the sales but i was up like a million dollars on the buys and i was just like close three buys close one of the sales break even let it drop a little bit make up four hundred thousand equity buy again hedge again close out the buys when they got in profit surprised you don't the sales. uh yeah me too <laughs> me too but like it was just calming to me but you have to know because if you if you close too many positions when you're hedged like you can bite yourself in the fucking ass mm -hmm. yeah or, or, you know, or you close out the wrong position and then you margin yourself out. Yeah, you I've did that, that, did you? <laughs> you did that, uh -huh. yeah. I don't know. Edging is fucking fun to me. Yeah, just like I said, you just test those limits. I bro. do, man. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. I do. I mean, that's you. I, I don't know, man. But like, and but I don't teach hedging, really. No. I don't think you can. No, who knows? <laughs> it's probably legal somewhere. <laughs> right. It's probably legal. Just don't do it. Learn to trade normal first. See, Grant yeah. is, like, right now, like, just even watching him and observe him, like, the way that he's, like, all right, I'm going to close this loss because it's going to hit either your stop loss reacting. or it's, like, yeah, reacting. Well, bro. yesterday uh, I called a sell for oil for everyone, and we got an oil sales, and it stopped us out in profit, and it came up, made a double top. I didn't want to call it again, but I told everyone in the group, like, hey, I'm going to get back in because this is a double top. There's divergence. And it, you know, it went, sold. I sat and watched the lower time frames. And I'm like, this thing's going to buy. I got everyone out. I didn't tell anyone to get in buys, but I got in buys. <laughs> 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 and, you know, it ended up working out. And that's just like watching the market and just being able to react to it as the information comes to you. Well, that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't do in the industry is they think that trading is just a... Uh, Take a position and go about your life and, you know, sit there and do this. It's yeah, it, watch trading is a yeah, fucking yeah, job. It is. It's a fucking job. Anyone that says that I want to join trading to not work, you are sadly mistaken. 100%. If you are if like trading, I personally think you need to be watching the charts for at least the first five hours of the day mm -hmm. with zero distractions. Yeah. You need to be sitting at the charts for the first five hours of the day. That's the thing. Like, or London set. I mean, I'm I say morning for us because that's our routine. But how many times do you go through pairs every morning? Go through different time frames, everything. On a, like a just like idiot. a daily just, basis. Yes. Oh, dude. I mean, the first fifteen minutes. Um, I talked about this the other day, but the first fifteen minutes of uh my morning, I lay in bed, and I go through the charts and I prepare my head on my phone, and then like I'll screenshot them. Like if you go through my phone, you'll see a shit ton of screenshots of charts that I just think, like, this could be something. So right. when I get to my computer, it's there. Speaking of which, I need to update the group now because <laughs> they're telling to put their stop loss and profit on gold. See, that's what happened to me the other day. I was in EG, uh, Euro GBP shorts, and it was, like, a 38.2 retracement. It was a hidden divergence, and it came down. Like, it came into profit. I didn't know EG moved so freaking slow. 
Right. And Jesus is like, Dude, I, I love your OGBP, but it is like if you're looking at lower time frame trades, it's fucking miserable. Right. Well, anyways, like I had a, a set stop loss, set <laughs> take profit. And Side note, I got into. I think you were negative three pips for like six hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Just straight, like it would go negative three pips, negative four, right. uh, negative two. Positive one, yeah. Negative three, <laughs> like it's ridiculous. it's it, dude. It's not a fun pair to trade. But, the, but exactly what he was talking about is just reacting. Like the market came down to an area, the fifty moving average, like where I've seen it happen a thousand times. Just take off that. Like I I waited around to see if it was gonna break it, and it just kept not breaking it. Mm-hmm. And so I took profit at the fifty moving average, and then what did it do? It just rejected the fifty moving average, you and it just n- nailed yeah. my stop loss. So that's and part of trading, though. It is, it is, and it's like I think you shorted Nas um, beginning of the week, yeah. And he like it was just like like you look at his charts, and he'll have this like massive take profit. And I I like that you're doing this though now because you'll you get your entry, and then you'll close like on a p- a point where you're like. It could reverse here. I'm gonna close majority of my position. Mm-hmm. Just leave a stop loss and profit, and see if it runs. Right, I love and that's that. how you're supposed to trade. Because, right. like I always say, the best entry was three years ago or one year ago. Like right. your best entry on a trade was right a year ago. Oh, yeah, and so it's like if people can learn how to like take a ten cent lot and close everything but point oh two, close point oh eight. You know what I mean? And leave point oh two running. I think people should. I, I honestly, and I don't do it, and I probably should, you know, and I'm probably, I'm going to start an account just to do this, I want to see, but I don't think you should technically, like, almost ever close a position, like, the full position. How many times have we called trades where we got, like, the entry, and then we close it off of 50, and then it runs for, like, 400 more pips, mm-hmm. and it's wow. like, why are we not, like, holding 10% of our position? That's just started the, that, that's, like, a part of the experience. Like, mm-hmm. I'm at that point right now where it's, like, I'm okay with holding trades. I am too now. So I'm it's okay like with holding trades yeah. unless I see something that's obvious. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to close this. But if it's like now I just see I, patterns I just, and I, I think see pattern we should, completions. I think we should make a deal where we only close like 80% of our position. I'm I mean, down for that. I'm like we only that. close like 80% of our all of our positions and just constantly leave 10% except, or 20%. Except for this gold call. I mean, I, re- I don't want to hold cells on gold. Right <laughs> no, no, no. It's got to be obvious. Yeah. But like, I'm talking about like higher time frame trades or like when we're looking and then like we go down, we like we see a higher time frame trade like on the daily and we're like, oh, this thing's going to buy up to here. But then when we go to that 30 minute and it's like, oh, it's in the 50. Like we should start just closing 80% of our position and leaving 20% mm-hmm. and let's just see how far the runners go. Because I can't tell you how many times that me and you've sat there and been like... There's been times in my life where I took 10 pips. (laughs) And it ran a (laughs) 1,000? And it ran a (laughs) 1,000 off of like 10 to 15 standards. Yeah. And if you just held one standard, you'd have made 100 grand? Something like that. It's crazy. I've done it probably... When I was scalping, like taking like seven, eight trades a day, it happened to me so much. But it's probably a good thing. No, it's just because it prepared you for learning. now. It's all part of that learning. Part of the experience. journey. Yes, the journey is. of becoming That's why a so trader. Many tr- beginning traders start out as scalpers because it's like, oh shit, I gotta get in and out. Yeah, and I was the same way. Yeah, I've I've always just loved swing trading or intraday trading. I like intraday a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I also intraday. over leveraged. The I beginning. also yeah. I also like to get out of the trade so I can sleep at night too. Sometimes. <laughs> You know, like I'll yeah. be waking up four and five times, you know, checking my phone. Have you yeah, have you have you had the, the chart dreams? Oh yeah. Just, <laughs> the chart yeah. dreams. Just wait till you freaking trade for other people. It's like you sweating at night. You wake <laughs> up every ten minutes. <laughs> Cracking out. I don't I don't want ever want to trade for other people. Bro, that's like yeah. my my step right now. Like that's where I'm at in my journey. I like, get why you're doing it because it challenges you. But it like, does. Bro. Fuck, I would never. Because if I break trade. this challenge, there's nothing that's stopping me. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Like, there's no way. I just I would hate to trade for other people. <laughs> I'm I'm at I'm at the point where it's like I don't really care anymore. Like, yeah. I'm gonna make them money. That's mm-hmm. all I've, I I just know I am. I'm confident in myself. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I I just, dude, I just can't deal with the fucking like back and 
fourth. Like that's the thing. People suck. <laughs> <laughs> People suck when you're trading their money, bro. They like, when you're doing are anything. so emotional. Yeah, and that's like, dude, just just let me do my thing. Yes, I promise breathe. you. Like, there's a reason why I'm not in trades right now. If you look at the freaking markets, yeah. they've just been oh, going. People are panicking that you haven't taken a trade yet, bro. I know it's insane. It's like, dude, I haven't seen these markets. I'm a pullback trader. There hasn't been pullbacks. But that's the experience difference. That's the experience. Is like everyone's like thinks that the since the markets are moving, it, you have to be in trade. And also, it's it's honestly a part of the problem. I think is traders. Like that are successful in trading mm -hmm. because they're showing that like, yeah, like they're in trades. Like, so like they're every, everyone's just bouncing around like, oh, this person, this person, this person to trade, this person to trade. It's like, in all honesty, I really don't think I've met a trader that trades like me. Right. Um, like if you, if you look at like a lot of the big names in the industry, they all trade differently. They do. hundred percent. I think they just found a way to make the market fit them. Like I know people that only trade one pair. For sure. Juicy. That's all he trade. Yeah, he only trades a GJ. That's like, it. that's it. I and, love that. And, and he only, t I think he scales into positions, but I, I don't think he takes, but like, like I mean, he has multiple trades on his account, but I think he scales into positions, but I think he only trades like one trade a week in reality. One or yeah, two trades a week. Them. He holds Dru them, right? Dru yeah, Druzy's really disciplined. I did an interview with him. Yeah. And like, the way he sees and analyzes the market is super technical. And if he's if he he has a seven to ten pip stop loss on every trade that he takes, Damn, and if he loses, savage. yeah, when, if he loses, he walks away, and if he wins, he walks away. And you know he was going through his uh, his account and all the trades that he's taken, and I mean whenever he's doing is working. <laughs> well, I mean if you have a seven to ten pip stop loss and you yeah. know how to hold trades, super tight. Yeah, and he's not scalping either. He's you know intraday. I, I don't know if he's swing trading, but it looked like most of it was intraday. I, I See, think most honestly, of the trades are 50 to 100 I don't pips. think that's that crazy. Like, I think it, like, it's amazing that he's doing it, but I think that you could easily develop a strategy like that. Yeah. Now knowing, like, even what I was telling you today, like, on that trend line retest, like, if you just traded trend line retest, you'd probably do pretty damn good. Properly? Right. Yes. Properly. Trading. Properly, yes. Yeah. yeah, 100%. You would do really good. Lower time frame or a lower time frame trend line breakout? And go for fifteen pips, or or or, or look at like like, look at the the uh, average daily range, of the pair, mm -hmm. and take um tr like draw a fifteen minute trend line, and if it breaks out to so whatever side, take one third of the average daily range as your si take profit. That would probably work. I don't mm -hmm. know if it would, but if you think about it, if like if you look at like GJ. GJ probably moves what eighty five to one hundred and twenty five pips a day or more. Oh, I mean, right well, now, now more, but like normally, I would say more honestly. Than, okay, I don't but know if, though. I don't know. But if you were to take that and like draw a trend line, and you take like say like every day, like let's say it's a hundred. Let's just make it easy, and let's say we're gonna go for twenty five, uh, twenty five percent of the average day range, twenty five pips. I guarantee you, if you have a trend line break. You could almost take twenty five pips every time and just take a ten pip stop loss. Mm -hmm. I might go test that after we get <laughs> off this just to well, see. That's the thing. Like if you guys have seen UJ, GJ, even Gold, uh, they all had higher time frame trend line breaks, mm -hmm. and like that's why it's like, all right, I saw so many people selling those trend line breaks, like even though it was clearly gonna buy, mm -hmm. like so many sells. It's like why not go with what the overall? But how do you go with that sometimes? You have to, bro. I know, but like, like how? Like, I pullbacks. didn't get any, but we didn't get any. There were some good pullbacks, like just during London session. Mm -hmm. we, we, there was actually great trades on London session. We need to start trading London. Dude, it's just hard. I'm, with I'm doing a London session at night. Tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to do one tonight. I might I mean, do it too. Shit. If y'all want to hop on. I might do it too. I'm going to do it from the house. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I've, I've, I've never traded London live, but I think it would be fun. Have you ever traded? Have you ever traded London? I don't think so. London's pretty fun. Have yeah. you, like you've genuinely never traded London? No, I always. I mean, I wake up in the night and like, see what's check, going but on. But I'm talking about like actually sit in front of the no. charts. Okay, like London, like you can be in really profitable trades before London, <laughs> and then next thing you know, your really profitable trades are complete no. shit. No. <laughs> I've had that happen so many times to no. me. London has some good breakouts and pullbacks. I'll trade London. I've woken up to some nightmares. What's yeah, what's my phone? What's your uh, like? What's your number one rule for how you trade, Grant? For how I trade? Uh, 
lately, it's just been like if the trade's not going my way, I've been watching lower time frames. If it's not going my way, I just get out. Yeah. And I've 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 found that it's not how many trades I win, it's how many trades I cut short when I'm losing. Because you're going to win and when you whenever you're in them, just hold them. Yeah. You that's a, that's a good Y'all hear that? You want to repeat that one more time? What about yours? I want to repeat that. They it, need to hear that one. It, if you're in them, just hold them, and you're winning. If not, and it's not going your way, there's no reason sitting there sweating and holding the drawdown. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if you know you're a new trader and you have a thousand dollar account, and you know you're holding, you're placing fifty cent lots because you don't know what you're doing. Next thing you know, you got two hundred dollars in drawdown. Like, what if you're fifty dollars next? Just get out. Yeah. Work work on I know you say entries aren't everything, but work on getting a better entry. And I agree. I think entries are a lot. <laughs> a lot. Like, that's what I pride myself in is entries because <sighs> you can get such good entries. Yes, you can, but at the same time At the same time, time it's like a nail in the foot, bro. Like I have shot myself in the foot by not trading trades like UJGJ because I didn't know where to enter, yes. even though they've been just running up thousands of pips. Yeah. And I shot myself in the foot. For the way that I've been trading lately, you're asking like the way the question was. What was your, what's like your number one rule with how you trade? Right now, honestly, it is uh, following my instinct. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. I feel like now I'm at a point of trading where it's like instinctual. It's not so much like, oh my god, there's a trend line here, there's a moving average here. Like I look at those things. But it's instinctual to me now. I For feel sure. like I am I am a very instinctual trader. Like how many times have I walked in your office and been like, I think this is just gonna it's gonna keep rising here. Right. Even though this trend line, it's got a trend line, it's got a sixty one point eight, it's got structure, it's got moving average, it's got the TDI, it's got hidden divergence, it's got all this stuff that that you name as a perfect fucking trade. But so knowing what trades to stay out of as well. Yes. Yes, knowing because what trades to stay out of, would take that trade or just buying. Or, I see, but I need to work on just buying that, right? like when, <laughs> like when it's gonna break out. But it's like, and it's like that's what I think the problem with trying to code EAs and robots and AI and all that stuff is because there is it's something you can't integrate you, intuition. You cannot, you cannot put intuition into a robot. That is why can now can a robot help you make maybe make it more beneficial? Yes. But I do not think you can, you, you just can't put intuition. Market intuition is the biggest thing. It's like, look at the difference in, in great basketball players and great football players. Field and court awareness. Oh, for sure. Kobe Bryant had the best field awareness. Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning all had the best field awareness. To become a great trader, you need to have chart awareness. Like I can almost sit here and it's like, and it might be because I look at the charts so much, but I can almost tell you what gold is doing right now without even looking at the charts in a long time. Well, I know, huh? It's rising. It is rising. It is rising. I think the last, the last two, four hour candle, we had a, we had a four hour candle that was massive and then we had a doji and then we had another four hour candle that's forming right now. That's looking like it's going to keep rising. Um, and, but we are on a type of a retracement from the high. But it had a trend line break and retest. See, that's where I and get that's too like, technical. And like, as it, like if you look at gold right now, it's just made higher lows, continue to make higher lows. For me, like I'm never gonna trade against a higher low. Yeah, which and, is fine. Like people make it work, but that's just for me. Like if I can find the overall direction of what the market's gonna be doing, I'm trading. Yeah, with you want to look for the next buy. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's I trade been my that problem way. right now. Is I that trade that way too. Good and sometimes buy. though, like like if you look at those lower time frames, you can get like a good like divergence, fucking trend line break, divergence, double top, and you're just like, I should really be selling this right now because your stop loss is four pips. Your take profit's 70, right. <laughs> but you're not going to fucking take it. See, and I get in that problem too. Well, I'll take it because like the risk is there. The, I'm I love raw to R traders. Risk That's, to reward traders is is fucking fantastic. Yeah, I'll lose I'll lose a little bit to make a lot. I I do have one question though that for both you guys, and I want to see if y'all agree with me on this because this, I think this is really cool. So I had a guy comment on my post, and he was like trying to like like oh I figured out how to trade when I was 16, 17 years old nine years ago, and I'm like bro like trading like wasn't even really that big. Forex wasn't that big ten years ago, but um. He was just like trying to like be like, oh, I can 
figure it out. And it's, it's like, if you're really good at mathematics and numbers, it's like, then like, you know, cause that's what trading is. And I'm like, I'm sitting here in my head. I'm like, you obviously know nothing about trading. Right. I can tell you what a chart looks like right now. I cannot tell you any current price of any pair right now. Maybe gold. No. I could tell you what a range of gold, gold and, and Bitcoin oil. is changing, trading and oil, but that's because it's a daily involvement of our life. But Euro USD, could you could you tell me without looking at your chart, or do you look at prices? Do you actually look at the price and uh, be like, no? But <laughs> you look at the chart. Psychological numbers. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, yeah, psychological numbers, but like I, I will know only AU is at like seventy four cents right now. <laughs> but like, you but know, you're not the, trading because of that. No. Exactly. Like I don't there, trade. There are, I do know some people that do trade there, like that. Oh, there are. Are you ever heard of the other traders that are like uh the the uh volume traders? Yes. The enlightened traders. <laughs> <laughs> so they call themselves the enlightened traders because they trade nothing off of nothing but volume. Really? Yeah. Like they they look at a volume scale. Well, yeah. I I hate some of the like things in this industry where just people think they're just like so much better because they trade a different way that's like the right way that the banks taught them blah 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 i hate it yes it's all dude go eat shit because <laughs> i don't care like, yeah i'm gonna trade my way i've made money the last six years doing it yep. like don't tell me that and, my and not bad. to mention if you if if the bank taught you how to trade you're probably trading for a hedge fund on a salary right <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that now do I want to learn more about like actually what's going on behind do you the want scenes? To? I do. I I do and I don't because I I agree like I think it would be super awesome, but I don't want it to fuck me up. I'm missing one aspect of my trading and that's being able to hold those like longer time frame breakouts and like finding areas to get into. Well, those we made a deal. Like, with what? 20%. 20%. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Go, but like, traders aside. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that's made... just the one thing I'm missing. I'm missing like where I could implement it because I see breakouts happening where I could get entries on that. And I'm missing out on like a ton of money. Doing, and that's, not doing that's it. that stigma of needing a perfect entry. Yeah, for sure. And that's like one of the things I've been trying to break like for myself but it it's also gets me in some of, bad it's shit that, exactly it's that fear of like okay what if this it's because we've seen that. everything in the market exactly and at the end of the day like if you just learn like anything can fucking happen like anyone that like anyone that tells me like like a 700 spike down and then all of a sudden it does what it's supposed to do yeah yeah that shit's happened anyone that tells me like oh i've mastered the markets i don't lose or, or i'm not afraid of the markets it's like you're a dumbass yeah. You're a dumbass. Like, you have not been robbed by the markets yet, then. You don't know what it's like to be robbed from the yeah. markets yet. Or when someone, like, like, like you know, no offense, you could hang out with us and trade with us, but, like, people that come to me and they're like, oh, I'm master of the markets. I've been trading for two years. It's like, no. Mm-hmm. I've been through three presidential elections. I've been through Brexit. <laughs> right. I've been through the start of now, World War III. <laughs> right. like, like, what have you been through? Trading wise, you know what I mean? Like that, that experience is untouched. Like, and I can't wait to see where you're at in seven years trading. Yeah. Like, Dude, it's probably going to be better. Than, he's going to be better where than we're at now in seven years, probably. Oh, baby, he better be because he definitely has like way better opportunity. Right we now. had IML. We had, we had, we had <laughs> and a harmonic, harmonic scanner. scanner. <laughs> Dude, that That's thing all was we so had. Garbage. I remember putting it on my chart. And, and it would just, just repaint. Like... It would just. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'd have AUD and ZD just doing Dude, this. Can you believe they built just... that company off of <laughs> a harmonic scanner <laughs> that would repaint? <laughs> repaint over and over and over. We'd be in like 600 pips of drawdown and they'd be like, Dude, the harmonic's there, bro. It's building a new pattern. <laughs> it's building a new one. <laughs> and we're like, Okay, let's go. <laughs> That was where we started. <laughs> it was bad. Ugh. Like, that's uh, where we started. That it is, is where we started. And there was nothing else. You know all about them harmonics. There was nothing else. There was there was nothing else. We had that in the market maker method. Bootleg edition. Bootleg. That was charged like 20 grand to get. From Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Bootleg edition. Bootleg edition Dude, market maker method. Everyone got that thing sent to them. Yes. That thing floated around the... the internet like for forex traders for like months yeah. i thought you were about to say an expression i was like okay but it's not good <laughs> <laughs> oh okay well where are we at where are we at little boy we good we good we good all right all right i right. love it i love it well like we've been on here for a while y'all wanna let's go ahead and cut this one uh, yep let's, yeah, let's see one. where we're at well with that being said please give trader society a follow on instagram 
Make sure you like, comment down below. Turn on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we do a podcast. Make sure you follow this guy on Instagram. Derek underscore Vandy. This guy on Instagram. Underscore Grant Hardy. Underscore Anthony's World underscore. Not only that, what about the new thing that Instagram has? Yes, yes, we do. do. Uh, make sure you turn on Trader Society on Instagram. Turn it into your favorites so you can be notified as well as um, actually have to turn the notification bell on there too. But so you can be notified as if, as we are your favorites so you can keep up to date with all our tips and tricks and what we do um, in the markets so you can see all the reels and stuff along those lines and all our updates. Um, also, check out TraderSociety.com. We have a new promo going right now. Um, it's pretty dope. It's an all-in-one package. You get it all. Live sessions, uh, signals, ideas, community chat, and everything else. So and take advantage of those live sessions if you can. Yes, there's like, a we, lot of We knowledge. pop off so much knowledge that you can't really get off like even even edu- a course education. Like no. just it's us reacting to the market, and it's kind of cool to see. So. It's very very cool. Learn how to react, not predict. I think that should be the the slogan of Trader Society. React, do not predict the markets. With that being said, peace out. Later, guys.